Greetings everyone, welcome back to Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep. In the last episode, we end up finishing off Castle of Dreams with Aqua. And now in this episode, we're going to be joining Ventus into the Enchanted Dominion. You may have noticed that Ventus is now at level 17. Yes, I decided to grind because to make this LP to go even more smoother than ever, I'd rather, you know, just let the grinding happen. Because I'm just going to say this now, it's going to end up happening in Kingdom Hearts 2 once I eventually get to that. Still no sign of Terra. Huh. You get away from her! What? Oh, I'm sorry. It's just, I've never seen anyone so beautiful. Who are you? I'm Ventus. But you can call me Ven. Oh, you don't seem bad, dear. I'm certain you have a pure heart, just like our precious Aurora. Can you tell me why she's sleeping? Long ago, Maleficent cursed her. Now she's stolen her heart. Hmm. Well then, why don't I go get it back for her? That's impossible, dear. Maleficent's home is at the Forbidden Mountain. It's not safe. I'm not afraid. We, we can't just leave Aurora like this. I can help. You gotta believe me. Come on. Let's go get her heart. You know, you're absolutely right. The Forbidden Mountain is through the forest. Come along, follow us. After all, we wouldn't want you to get lost. Anyways, now we can finally start the Enchanted Dominion. And just like Terra, that he found the treasure chest with sleep in it, Ventus also finds sleep as well. Now, what does Ventus' adventure foretold in this place? Well, not really much. And what grinding that I did for Ventus? Well, essentially, we end up getting Aroga. And during getting Aroga, we're going to try to get Kuraga. Because if we can be able to meld those two, and I think it's these two spells, we can be able to get one of... Ventus's signature abilities when you there are a bunch of abilities that are only that are for everybody but there are only rare few that are only for that one specific character there are seeker minds that are only for aqua there is salvation and faith that is only for Ventus and then there's geo impact and brutal break I think the move is called that's only for Terra some of these moves you can obtain, and some of these moves you have no choice but to meld. There is Arsolum, which is for Terra, and Arscanum, which is for Ventus. You can actually get Arscanum early without, you know, doing the 100% guaranteed one. There's the 50% chance. What happens is, is that when you're melding a Pacific ability that's only 50%, what ends up happening is there is a slight chance that the ability will change into an advanced ability. Mind you, that can happen when you're melding at random, but if you're going through a guide, that also can happen naturally. But you end up having to save scum, which I'm not doing to be honest, because there are ways to make those abilities 100% and you don't really need to go out of your way to save scum just to have the ability early. I mean, yes, the ability is strong and everything, but the problem with those powerful abilities is that they also take two slots. There are a few moves that Ventus, Aqua, and Terra have in their arsenal that takes up two slots. And to be honest, having two slots being taken is not really all that great considering that those abilities not only take long to recharge, but also take up a very large space we don't want that it's kind of bad but sadly we're just going through the same exact um pathway except ventus actually gets to explore the entire area 
while Aqua will also end up exploring the entire area, except for just one Pacific place. But, eh. Actually, no, Aqua. I'm not sure if she goes into the castle. I don't really remember. But whatever. Anyways, we're gonna be going after Aurora's heart. Finally. By the way, if you were able to see Aurora's model, you could probably still see that she is breathing. That's because there is a difference between heart and physical heart. Heart in Kingdom Hearts' terms is kind of like a spiritual energy that is just being pulled out of you. Then again, there's going to be a moment in Ven's story where you will end up seeing that happen and he kind of... Yeah. There's going to be an explanation and you've seen it in Aquas's part during the Dwarven Woodlands. You probably want you are probably slightly wondering why is Ventus like that? That gets explained later on. Way later on in Ven's story. Anyways, Aroga has a much bigger wide radius than Arrow. That's why I'm using it now. Arrow ends up getting changed in Kingdom Hearts 1 where it's a natural shield rather than an ability that can actually defeat opponents. I mean, don't get me wrong, Aroga in Kingdom Hearts 1 is wonderful and gets replaced by Reflect in Kingdom Hearts 2. The thing about the command, um, the command deck, I like it and then I dislike it. I like it because it basically allows you to strategize and create your own command deck to accommodate for bosses. Even though the, for the secret bosses, for two of the secret bosses, you only have like either one strategy and that one strategy is just what you're always constantly doing. Like the strategy that you're probably doing now in the main story, you're never going to go ahead and be doing that. But for the secret bosses, you're going to have to change your strategy to specifically cater to those bosses so that way you can survive. Of course, Cure Kiraga is going to be like your main heal or potions if you are feeling frosty with that. And Leaf Bracer is a must, because without Leaf Bracer, you can't cure, you won't be able to cure without getting interrupted. Because if you cure now, you can get hit out of the cure, and that's kind of terrible because you're also wasting a cure, and then you have to wait for it to recharge. And Kiraga takes a long time to recharge. Having Leaf Bracer mitigates that, so when you're curing yourself, you get a slight invisibility frames, and you know, that's really about it. It sometimes doesn't help if the opponent is doing combos to you because you also have to be sure to heal outside of their range. Unless, you know, the field is very small, then, well, that's a problem. Looks like we're stuck. This must be Maleficent's doing. I know. Shall we? Yep. question is why couldn't you fairies go to and fight Maleficent on your own is it because you guys need somebody to help you I just don't get it it makes no sense there are no enemies on this field which I never understand why because in Aqua's part there are enemies when she comes back but whatever now we're actually gonna be fighting some unique enemies or I shall now dub them Disney type enemies and that's kind of something that I noticed that Kingdom Hearts doesn't really do a lot I mean they do it for occasion occasionally, but eh, They don't really do it a whole lot These are basically Maleficent's goons the ones that are probably that are in the movie I don't know why I say probably they are in the movie, but yeah, they're not really that great. They're not powerful They're easy to um, Dispatch and you can, uh, you can just keep moving Absolute zero, another shot lock, except it's ice based and not thunder or f like flame salvo. So, yeah, you guys are probably wondering why am I killing all these ridiculous things? Well, I don't know. Just have to. They're there, they need to be murdered, and, you know, experience. Luckily enough, after this level, then we'll end up getting that D link that I was talking about. And Aqua will also be getting that. Yeah, Aqua will also be getting that on um, D-Link 2 after this level as well. It seems that they both end up getting said D-Link um, after the game, after this area. 
I'm not sure if I, if I said... No, I actually did not say who the D-Link was. I... Careful, they're Maleficent. Well, they ain't guarding nothing. <laughs> Tension! No sleeping on the job. Alright, now it's time to defeat Maleficent's goons. And that's it. That's all we're doing. We're just beating up her goons and just laughing at them as they die. <laughs> uh, this is actually going to go um, very quickly. I guess I should go ahead and say one complaint I have with Ven. When he ever does the dodge roll, and we're going to see this after this fight. If you pay attention to Ven's model, you can notice that his hand is always in a position, his right hand is always like in a position where he's like still holding the Keyblade even if the Keyblade is not out. Like, you know, unlike Terra and Aqua's dodging ability, it doesn't look like that they're still holding their Keyblade. Then on the other hand, no. Then still has that, when he has that model position when he dodge rolls and it kinda is jarring. Whatever. Anyways, if you are here at an inappropriate, well, at a normal level, you will be taking a lot of damage from these guys because they do hit hard. Like as you see there, they took like, just shooting you takes like a lot of health out of you and it's like whatever. But yeah, the, uh, it, this, that cutscene, there is no cutscene. It just, it just ends. And that's it. That's it. Actually, now that I think about it, you can still see that he is holding, like he's holding the Keyblade in his hand. Just look at it. You see how his right hand is when he dodge rolls? It looks like he's still holding the Keyblade in his hand, but he's not. And I end up realizing this, and it bothers me. <laughs> and now that you can't unsee it, you will forever think that Ven is holding an invincible, an invisible Keyblade forever. Welcome to the quote-unquote maze. I call it a quote-unquote maze because it's actually really not a maze. The game only lets you go into one specific area regardless, so yeah, just keep going. Just keep going in the pathway that they give you, and then that's about it. Killing enemies along the way, increasing your magic, and bada boom. Luckily enough, Ven is actually one of the only characters that I have trouble in making him powerful. I have no trouble making Aqua powerful. I have no trouble making Terra powerful. Ventus? Nah. I mean, there is going to be one area that I am going to be sequence breaking because the game kind of wants you to have a specific ability to be able to get it, but it's easier if you know the trick on how to do it, and I'm pretty sure everybody has done this, even in the PSP version. It's not just a Final Mix thing. You can also do it in here. There's a reason as... there's Let's just say there's a reason why I'm keeping Sliding Dash as of right now. You're going to need it. You're going to need two Sliding Dashes. Or you need one. No, no, no. You probably need two. And you need to have it at a max level, too. It can't be at a, um... It can't be at a level one, because it won't let you reach the platform that you need to get to. But we'll be going in more detail of that later. You're actually not supposed to come in this way. This area right here is just to give you treasure chests, and that's really about it. But hey, what are you gonna do? Treasure chests mean more power. Or more items. Aqua and Terra um, treasure chests sometimes sports them very powerful commands that they don't need to meld. Ventus, on the other hand, does not really have that much luxury. You kind of do have to go out of your way to create his one of his most powerful abilities, which sucks. Like unlike Terra and Aqua, they can you know they can go out of their way to get. Um, a powerful shot lock or you know two powerful abilities but Ventus eh, not so much Ventus is kind of like I think it's more because of the fact that Ventus's final boss doesn't technically need it considering it fights the same way as normal so that's <laughs>
That should do it. Don't you remember? We've met before. We... we have? Why, of course, you said so yourself. Once upon a dream. I never thought I would meet you. Outside of my dreams, that is. Who are you? What's your name? Hmm? My name? Why, it's... Oh, oh no, I can't. Goodbye. I must see you. I don't know. Maybe someday. When? Tomorrow? Oh, no. This evening. At the cottage in the Glen. What was that? Aurora's memory. She must have gotten her heart back. So her dream came true? Yes, not long ago. Dreams are very strong beliefs. Aurora's led her to her true love. I see you hold strong beliefs too, don't you, dear? Yep. You also have a strong light. Hmm. All right, hurry. We can't stay here. Someone has released Aurora's heart. Tell me, child, was it you? Maleficent. Only because you stole it in the first place. <laughs> A keyblade? You must be Ventus. Huh? How do you know about me and the keyblade? My powers ensure I'd know of the key to bringing me hearts. Terra gave me a demonstration. <laughs> Terra? He was here? Why, yes. In fact, it was he who stole Princess Aurora's heart. That's a lie! I was asked to leave you unharmed, but it seems I have no choice. And this is kind of one of the things that I kind of am complaining about now that I'm actually re-watching this story. The reason every other villain, and I'm just going to spoil this very quickly, every other Disney world that Ventus, Aqua, and Terra visits, the villains have no idea what the Keyblade is. Maleficent is the only person, and the only reason for that is because she ends up appearing in Kingdom Hearts 1. That's really about it. That's why she knows so much about it, and that's why she basically knows who Ventus, Aqua, and Terra is, because LOL, Master Xehanort probably told her everything about what she needs to do. Anyways, this boss fight, when I first played it, when I had the original copy of Birth by Sleep, it was hard, because I didn't understand what I was supposed to do, especially the command, the little bit of a quote-unquote reaction command that you're supposed to do. I guess I should be going into detail what her abilities are. She has Thunder Staff ability, she has Thunder Multi Strikes, and she has her weird little galaxy spinning attack, which she actually does in the movie. And she also has the Reaction Command, which is essentially putting you to sleep. Uh, Suzanne Bleakley. Bleakley? Bleakley. I know it's Suzanne, but she loves that line. Anyways, this is the reaction command that I can I kept constantly failing because I didn't understand what I was supposed to do. Anyways, just keep pressing the button as the circle, um, 
goes clockwise. And then that's really about it. And that's how you beat her. It puts her to sleep for a few seconds and you can be able to wail on her, but that's about it. Anyways, time for Aqua. What's that? I think I'd better go take a look inside. Aqua is also a very high level a bit as well. Like I said, to be able to make these worlds go faster, because as I stated before, this is more of a story driven game than, um, combat driven game the combat even if people do like the command deck it's not really that flashy i mean i do agree that two kind of gets like over the top and whatnot but eh, at least it does something interesting uh, even though it's more cutscenes and the flashy battle mechanics i mean i still love burp by sleep for what it does i like the music i like um the battles i even like the end the final battle for all three characters because it kind of ends up showcasing um the main villain of the game and yes master xehanort is the main villain of the game if you guys haven't really noticed that with the first cutscene that he was talking to tara and also talking to that mass boy i don't know what ends up saying that he's not evil the game doesn't even hide it. The cuts, the, the freaking opening cutscene that you end up seeing ends up showcasing that he's evil. There's no way Tara would hurt somebody like that. You don't believe me? That's unfortunate, for he agreed so easily. He did? Ben, don't be fooled! Aqua! Tara would never do that. You know that as well as I do. Yeah. Ah, the truth can be most cruel, even amongst the closest of friends. After all, one never knows the secrets of another's heart. I'm sure you'll agree, Ventus. Aqua. <sighs> The master sent me. Huh? Then, let's go home. But Terra... Terra's not ready to leave yet. Like, like right, right now, now, he's leaving you behind. And by the, and by the time, time you catch up, up, he'll be a different person. <sighs> Sorry, Aqua. But... I can't go with you. What? It's just... I have to find him before it's too late. Then I see you too wield a Keyblade. How do you know about the Keyblade? A source of power. A key that opens the hearts of men, of entire worlds, and allows one to obtain anything and everything. Such a power I find most fascinating. So, Terra... He really? Yes. Now, my dear, would you like to assist me as well? Never! I see. Xehanort was right. You are a most stubborn girl. Master Xehanort, how do you... It seems you need time to consider my offer. Fortunately, I have the perfect place. What? My name is Aqua. It looks like I was caught in a trap. Why are you here? To prevent me from breaking her evil curse, I was to meet the most beautiful girl at a cottage in the Glen. But now my true love lies in an eternal slumber, and only I can break the spell. You must really love her. Is what you said true? Yes, Maleficent told me. 
Oh, Prince Philip, it's you. Now, Philip, the road to true love may be barred by many more dangers, which you alone will have to face. I'm going with you. There's something I need to know, and Maleficent has the answer. Yes, of course, dear. Now come along. We must hurry to Aurora. Yes, you must face it alone. That's why you're gonna have Aqua with you. Nah, let's just pretend that she just does not exist in that fight, and you're the one who actually won. Not, not, not Aqua. Aqua didn't help you at all. Yeah, whatever. Anyways, and this section here is just essentially just mooks. You're just fighting nothing but mooks. That's it. You don't get into the um, plot of the story until you go back to the um, bridge area. So, yeah. By the way, we got a bunch of fires because we were fighting a bunch of enemies. Gotta love that a lot of enemies end up dropping fires. It's kind of annoying, to be honest. End up getting magic haze, which is really good for Aqua because, you know, magic user. Whoop, whoop. What I'm trying to give Aqua is, well, actually nothing really, because as I stated before, I'm still going to be using the save file for in the final area, so I don't have to go about grinding for all of that. Not only that, the levels for all three of the characters are kind of a very low level, and it kind of shows, it kind of says a lot that I'm a little bit better in the game than I was before, for the most part. I am going to be changing some stuff with Terra, though. But yeah, I'm going to be changing some stuff for Terra for obvious reasons. Because for the most part, his fight is probably one of the hardest fights in the game. So, yeah. Aqua, I don't really have to do anything with her. She's fine. And Ventus, he's also fine as is. It's just that I have to also be sure to not be too cocky with these fights. But since I'm doing them post, it won't really matter. I hope, and even if I die, I'll just edit it out. The only way you'll know is if the music resets. No, I'm actually being serious. The thing is, is that that's kind of the one of the things that you can tell by people's videos whenever they do battles, like no hit runs and whatnot. They kind of do the whole editing around the blacks when the when the screen goes to black. But then you can notice that the song resets. Sometimes there are some people that actually do the fight straight up, and then there's sometimes that people don't do the fight straight up, and you kind of hear the song loop backwards. All right. So we got ourselves confusion strike, which we're not going to use. You can drop back down the hole if you wish. I wouldn't do it though. It's kind of a waste of time. All right, this section here, essentially if they end up hitting the gates, the little switches over there to go ahead and open the gates. Those little pygmy things will be dropping rocks in your heads, but they don't really do, they're not that much of a threat. They are annoying though, but they're just not that much of a threat. Ow. And yeah, I'm just getting shot like nothing. Now, Prince Philip, if you notice, he has more health than us, which sucks. And they keep shooting me with arrows. You know, I, have to, I think after a while I'll get annoyed by that. Once you've killed all the enemies off of the ground, Prince Philip will go ahead and do, will grab, pull you up, throw you into the air, and then Aqua will, for some reason, use her feet to stomp the ground. Fun fact, if you actually come back here with Ventus, you can actually see those down on, on, on the ground, I guess. They're lowered, is the thing. Unless I think it's Ventus, or maybe I'm just thinking of Aqua. I don't really know. I forgot. One thing I should mention, though, I did skip a cutscene for Ventus, and that's when he was leaving the Enchanted Dominion. My only reason for skipping that is because it's, there's no point. We are gonna, we, you, for one, you already seen the Keyblade that you already get in this area. So, that's kind of redundant to see. 
And not only that, there's an ex there's another cutscene that happens, but I'm gonna show that in the next episode. So, you know, it fits well with what's happening. Trust me. You guys already know I am doing these cutscenes. And if I am doing these cutscenes incorrectly and they seem out of in out of order, don't worry. I'm pretty sure they're in order, trust me. Because with the timeline that the game gives you, they show you where um they don't show you where every cutscene takes place, but I know where most of the cutscenes start and where most of the cutscenes end. Like with that part right there, even though the transition was a bit odd because Aqua still has has a different keyblade. I wish they didn't have their default keyblade, but whatever. What's actually funny is that I think Terra is like the one of the only characters who actually changes his keyblade within um the cutscene. That's pretty funny. I mean, you can also say for Aqua too, but not Ventus. Ventus does not. His keyblade never changes within the cutscene. And that's it. And we're done. Now it's time to head back into the bridge, and we obtain high jump. Replace jump with that because you don't need it anymore. And now that we have high jump, now we can jump very high. And it's so awkward we end up stopping the high jump and mid jump because it just looks weird. That right there was just showcasing Aqua's invisibility frames. Well, for the most part. Well, you'll actually see her powerful invisibility frames in later battles. Another thing I should, I guess I should say, if Terra managed, and I'm more so focusing more on Terra since he's the only one, I he's the one fight I don't want to screw up on. If I manage to make Terra more decent in the LP rather than the save file that I have, then I'm just going to use the LP file rather than the save file. Because my only issue is that Terra is missing some moves here and there. Like, well... He's missing some moves that more so covers his bases, and the problem with his final boss is that if you're not careful, especially on proud and critical mode, he can just kill you in just one combo. So, yeah. Some people already know who the final boss is, but I'm just gonna leave that for spoiler's sake. I should more so say people already know who the final boss is because of Kingdom Hearts 1, but whatever. Story segregation, man. It makes sense. I mean, I would want to go into more detail with the secret bosses, but... Well, to be... F no, I can't go into more detail with the secret bosses. I can't even go into detail with one of the secret bosses that's more spoiler... And that doesn't... Sh that's more story-driven than anything. Because of the lore behind him. <laughs> anyway, it's time to fight Maleficent. But what a twist! <sighs> the forest of thorns shall be your tomb! Wound round the castle in a bower of doom! What did Master Xehanort tell you? Such a pity, child, that you don't have Terra's gift for obedience. Nor can you see how easy it was for him. Terra would never do anything to help you. Quite the contrary. He fully embraced the darkness within himself. Stop lying! See for yourself all the powers of hell! <sighs> Time for Maleficent Dragon. Now, I don't showcase uh, action command that you can do with Prince Philip. It's essentially the same thing that you did with those two rocks, where you can stomp on Maleficent when she's flying around. I mean, not there. I am going to show one of them, but I, I prefer the one where you're on her back. But anyways, this fight, she doesn't. She can't move. She can fly, but she won't be able to get that out because of how strong we are, and she's going to kind of die pretty quickly. 
When Bruce Phillips says here, you want to stand behind him so he can block the fire. But other than that, that's really it. I guess I should mention something. Um, that's one of the only two times that you'll ever hear hell in Kingdom Hearts. That's why it gets to rated E10, because they say hell. Yeah, I'm actually not kidding. That's why Dream Drop Distance has that too. It's really, it's, it's, it's dumb. Anyways, that's the end of this episode, and I'll see you guys next time for when we go to someplace with Terra. It's the power of true love that defeated you. I will not be defeated by something as insignificant as love. You don't even know the first thing about it. You're too clouded by darkness to see that there's something greater. Try all you want, but you'll never defeat a heart filled with light. Perhaps. But remember one thing. As long as there is light, there will be darkness. And in time, many more will be drawn to it. Then they will all belong to me! <laughs> Tara, you better stay strong for me. Where's he going?